Hi there, this is a quick overview of the paper entitled Batch Policy Learning Under Constraints. The setting that we will be considering is an offline, off-policy learning scenario where we try to learn policies from some pre-collected, potentially suboptimal data. And the starting motivation here is that we already interact with sequential decision-making system on a daily basis some examples that come to mind are cyber physical systems, customer support systems, or recommendation or advertising systems. The common feature of these systems is that there is already some policy in place that makes decisions. Those policy may not necessarily be machine learning policy, but we can collect historical data from some data gathering policy, and that data may not be optimal. And now the motivating question is, can we just use this hopefully abundant source of data that we collect to learn a better policy that probably satisfy multiple constraints? And second, let's say we want to change our constraint criteria. Can we still somehow learn near optimal policies under these new constraints without having to deploy the policy to real systems? Here we consider the standard MDP setup and we're going to analyze a setting where there is no further exploration. But I'll note that from an interaction point of view, the questions that we are studying here are complementary to any online exploration scheme. So let's set up the problem. We assume that we have a data set which has n tuples of current state, actions, the next state, and some cost measurement. The goal is to find a policy pi so that to minimize some main objective cost C while satisfying the constraint cost G less than some threshold, perhaps specified by some domain experts. And to simplify the notation, let me just write that threshold value to be zero, even though it can be anything. C and G are also known in the common reinforcement learning literatures as value functions. Specifically, uh, C and G denote the long-term sum of costs, uh, little c and g, except that um, lowercase g here will be a vector value function. So then we assume that we have the ability to observe the cost measurements associated with lowercase c and g. And again, this data set D is generated by some historical data generating policy pi sub D. So one example of this formulation is we can study safety in a counterfactual manner. And by counterfactual, I mean that after the system has been running for some time, we realize that the system is exhibiting certain undesirable behaviors so we can introduce a new cost, G, after the fact that effectively penalizes the error state. Second, and perhaps more generally, multi-criteria reinforcement learning problems can be described using this framework. A specific setting that I will return to later is this car driving example, where we want to minimize the travel time subject to smooth driving constraints and additionally subject to lane keeping consistency. So let's talk about the method. A natural place to start is to consider the Lagrangian of the constraint optimization problem. The original primal problem is equivalent to the standard mean max objective and the dual problem is the max mean. Policy pi is trying to minimize the Lagrangian given any lambda and given any policy, lambda will try to maximize the Lagrangian. And so our approach is to construct an algorithm building on this game theoretic perspective. The construction is done by multi-level machine learning reductions to supervise learning and online learning. In general, machine learning reduction is the idea of designing algorithm that leverages the guarantees of simpler learning problems. So let me go into more details. Here's a high-level 
overview of each iteration of the algorithm. At each round, given the latest lambda, we find the best response from the policy class. Best response here means finding a policy that minimizes the Lagrangian given a fixed lambda, and this is a batch reinforcement learning problem with respect to cos c plus lambda times g. The techniques to solve this involve multiple reductions to supervised learning, and there exists known techniques to solve these problems, such as fitted Q iteration or least square policy iteration. And then we evaluate the primal and dual given the policy and lambda to see what the best that the policy player can achieve for the primal and what's the worst that the lambda player can make for the dual. If the primal dual gap is below some threshold omega, which means that the game has achieved approximate equilibrium, then we stop and return the policy. Otherwise, the lambda player's response using any no-regret online learning algorithm to update to the next lambda. And in fact, assuming that the evaluation steps are done exactly, we can show that if the regret is square root of t, then the approximate equilibrium is achieved after 1 over omega square iterations. Intuitively, the online learning subroutine updates lambda based on the amount of constraint violation. But the question is, how do we know how much we are violating the constraints by? This amounts to an off-policy policy evaluation problem in reinforcement learning. The problem is that given some policy, we need to estimate the value of function g for pi based off of the data generated by another policy, pi sub d in this case, without running policy pi itself. And clearly, this is a pretty important problem for any safe deployment of policy to many real-life applications. So we propose a simple model-free technique that uses function approximation. We call it fit queue evaluation. It basically relies on reductions to multiple supervised learning problems, and here's how it works. First, we choose a function class f, such as neural networks, and then for capital K iterations, we invoke supervised learning to learn a new uh, function Q that maps the state action pairs from the given data set to a new target that depends on the value of Q from the previous iteration and the policy actions of the next state, which we do know. And then simply output the value based off of the last iteration uh, QK. We can show an error bound for this off policy evaluation procedure. This is a somewhat simplified statement to keep the notations light, but what it says is that after K iteration of this procedure, for any epsilon and delta, if the number of samples n is polynomial in 1 over epsilon, and the pseudo-dimension of the function class f, then the difference between the estimated value function and the true value function is bounded by this quantity on the right, where beta is a concentration coefficient that describes how stable the underlying MDP is with respect to a distribution drift from the data generating policy to the evaluation policy pi. We assume that this coefficient is finite, and we can provide example uh, that learning might not be possible otherwise. So now we can put the pieces together, combining the convergence result with guarantee of fit -Q evaluation to basically provide the overall error guarantees of the algorithm. Given enough samples in the dataset, we can show that the main objective performance of the policy returned by our algorithm is near optimal. At the same time, all the constraints are guaranteed 
to be approximately satisfied. And here recall that omega is a chosen stopping condition of the algorithm. Let's look at some experimental result on the simulated car racing domain. Here the original task is to minimize travel time. Uh, here's one example of the data generating policy. And then we added two additional constraints after the fact. One is driving has to be smooth. And two is that the car stay close to the center of the lane. The threshold is set to be about half of the value of an optimal policy train without additional constraints. This setup is interesting because these three criteria are in conflict with one another. For example, a car that drives fast tends to cut corners and apply many sudden brakes. So on the right, you can see the result of our algorithm. In this particular domain, an interesting result here is that this policy manages to find a policy that satisfies the counterfactual constraint, and yet its primary objective is also comparable with online reinforcement learning policy train ignoring constraints. This resulted in simulation, and it will be interesting to try it out on some realistic situations as well. So to summarize, the idea of integrating value-based constraint into policy is potentially useful one for many realistic scenarios where we may want to incorporate side properties uh, that are required by real-world situations. It is flexible in the sense that when our cost function is not perfect, then the domain expert can hopefully encode additional side constraint as they see fit. Also, being able to evaluate the policy offline is important application in itself. Another, another side effect here is by considering offline of policy learning, we can also achieve better data efficiency. In online reinforcement learning, as you know, changing cost function will require learning again from scratch. So there are a lot more detail that are in the paper that I have not been able to cover here. If you're interested, we also have uh, the code available on GitHub as well. Thank you.